So I just finished getting thoughts off my head about Afghanistan. It kind of feeds into something else that I wanted to do a separate brief video about, which is uh, something called the Jesus Prayer, which um, I kind of think is an unfortunately corny sounding name. <laughs> Sounds kind of uh, kind of goofy and kind of trite kind of thing that would have been on Saturday Night Live in the 80s and people would have laughed and scoffed at it. But it's actually something pretty profound. I learned it from a YouTuber who is an Eastern Orthodox um, Catholic monk. Um, he suggested it. He said it was when people enter into the Easter, when monks enter into the Eastern Orthodoxy, they spend their first, I can't remember the details, but I think he said the first like several months just doing the Jesus prayer over and over and over again. And uh, I'm always hesitant to talk about um, spiritual topics for various reasons. Number one, because my spiritual ideas are complex. And uh, I always fear getting put in the, uh, the wrong box. And I also fear misrepresenting this or that. I speak only for myself in this. I'm not a Catholic. I don't, whether or not I would call myself Christian is kind of complicated. But... I did have an incredibly, incredibly transformative and powerful experience with the Jesus Prayer while I was, it was during the, the initial lockdowns for COVID. <clears throat> I, I, you know, during that time I was living alone and I, I really turned inward, inward spiritually and psychologically. And um, I decided to do the Jesus Prayer. The Jesus Prayer is real simple. It just goes... Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And I, don't, I don't. I'm not comfortable putting that on a video because I, I don't want it to trivialize it. I feel weird doing um, spiritual matters in public. I'm doing this purely uh, out of a sense of service in the hopes that maybe, just maybe, somebody stumbles upon this video and it helps, and that's it. It's the only reason I'm putting this out here. The only reason I would say this prayer out loud in a public way um, is out of hope that maybe, just maybe, it reached somebody that could help them. But it's as simple as that. I said it like a, or I say it like a mantra, almost like an Indian mantra. You know, I just say over and over again, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And when I started it, it was part of, uh, I started, I took on a whole bunch of new spiritual practices. And it was really just kind of one of them. And it wasn't one that I actually thought it would have too much of an effect, but it ended up having the most profound effect on my mind, my spirit, and my life. And it's somewhat hard to describe, but I'm going to try here because again... Maybe, just maybe, it would help somebody someday. But, so, you know, when I first said the prayer initially, it forced me to face some of the, the worst things I've done in my life. Some of the really negative things I've done in my life. The people I've hurt. Just the immoral, unethical things that I've done. The obvious stuff. The kind of stuff where it's like... Yeah, that was bad by any measure. The kind of stuff that when I did it, I thought, well, that was bad. That I should not have done that. You know, the obvious, the biggies. Uh, it was actually very dark. It, was not, it wasn't pleasant. It wasn't pleasant at all. You know, I forced myself to look at myself and to look at, look at those big sins. It was very painful. But I pushed through it. But the idea that it was like fire, you know, it was like, I was like, uh, I, I was, I was suffering the flames to purify myself. That part was interesting and it was very powerful. And it's one of the reasons it, uh, I would recommend anybody doing it sincerely and with purpose, you know, just, just put like, I actually treated it like any other goal. I put it on my to-do list and I would say, do 20 Jesus prayers a day. And I would do exactly 20 a day to make sure I was disciplined every day to do it. But the really powerful effects were the times when you had kind of get lost in the prayer. And it would become, you know, like a mantra. And I would just go and go and go for half hour at a time saying this over and over again. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. 
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And it was really intense experiences with these um, wild visualizations of brilliant white light. And um, yeah, it, it was intense. But what I found and what I continue to find maybe more interesting is the continued effect. Because after I had faced those things and sat with those feelings and allowed myself to feel the shame and the grief that I should have felt, and after feeling a measure of uh, healing from that, the prayer continued to have an effect in that it made me acutely aware of all of the little sins that I commit every day. The little sins of arrogance, selfishness, sloth. The little tiny decisions that I made that kept me from being the best human being that I could possibly be. And you know, when I say this, I, I'm fully aware because I used to be one of these people that, you know, when you hear something like that, the thought, I think, I'm just going to turn around here because I, I can hear a dog up ahead and I don't want it to disturb the video. But, um, a dog barking, I mean, <clears throat> I think there's a, a house back in those woods up there. But, uh. Yeah, so you start, I started really looking at all of the little micro decisions that I made every day, the little bits of cowardice when I, when I didn't speak truth in the face of power, uh, when I, when I did something for no other reason but to fulfill the most shallow aspects of my ego and self-indulgence. Little things like that. But when I say things like that, I know as somebody who used to despise Christianity and used to despise the Christian idea, just the very idea of, of the religion, you know, oh, they fill you with shame. They fill you with guilt. It's horrible, man. And believe me, I absolutely, I agree. I hear the way that a lot of the evangelicals deal with the religion, particularly, you know, like throughout the Midwest and the South and stuff. And I still am completely against that. Uh, I think it's it's completely useless and pointless to just badger people and make them feel like crap about themselves. But that's not the effect of actually sitting with the Jesus prayer. And actually, if I may say so, sitting with Jesus or the archetype of Jesus or the hallucination of Jesus, whatever it is, I don't I don't feel any need to defend whether or not he that experience was literally real. I don't care. Well, I care obviously. <clears throat> but in terms of discussing the prayer, none of that matters. Even if it was a psychological construct, who cares, you know? Um, it's like pragmatism, man. You know? If it works, it works. And so whatever it was, the effect was not this. It did not create self-hatred in me. It did not create endless guilt and shame as one might suppose, and as I would have supposed at an earlier time. I just walked by a, a thing of animal poop. It didn't occur to me that I should divert the camera. I'm hoping none of you all saw that. But, uh, it's kind of funny. But, um, uh, yeah, the effect, rather than being debilitating and disempowering was exactly the opposite. And I, I have tried to figure out why that is, because at first I couldn't explain it. I couldn't explain why I was waking up every day more cognizant of my failings and yet feeling better about myself, right? That's how I would word it. And I know that's really kind of odd. But... That is, I believe, a bird back there, even though it sounds like a human. But, um... So, upon contemplating it for a while, this is what I... The conclusion that I arrived at. The archetype of Jesus and the, the whole spirit of the Jesus prayer of asking for the forgiveness of sins to such an extent that your sins become... You start to look at your micro-sins, your little sins... And you refuse to turn away from them and you accept the fact that on a daily basis you 
the little things that we all pass off we say yo that's no big deal man it's no big deal dude it is a big deal right like how we conduct ourselves in little matters is as important as how we conduct ourselves in big matters and that's very demanding and that's a, a, a lot to ask for yourself right but that's the thing. The reason why I believe it is empowering rather than disempowering is because you get yourself to the point where you say, I, as a human being, perhaps as a creation of the divine, everything I do does matter. This life matters. Every little decision in this life matters. And... While that is difficult, and that is a heavy responsibility to put on your shoulders, it's also empowering. Because you're no longer living in this, this fake humility, I don't know how, how we say it, this, this engineered shame that society tries to foist upon people unless you're one of those born into an elite family, you know, if you're just a regular person. This is especially true. It's a big thing here in Northeast Pennsylvania. So I think it's also big in general in like blue collar families. This like, keep your head down. Um, nothing's really that important. Who do you think you are? The Jesus prayer kind of cleans that out because it makes you realize that Every single one of us is a representation of God. Every single one of us is a product of the divine in this life. This life matters. And how we conduct ourselves matters on a level deeper, deeper than I ever comprehended until I dove into the waters of the Jesus prayer. And until I, I went deep into those waters and I found I found the depth of this life and of my own responsibility, which is something I'm still trying to build myself up to be big enough to shoulder properly. But I see it and I acknowledge it and in seeing it and acknowledging it, it did not beat me down as one might expect. It gave me something to aspire to. It has lifted me up. It has made me a better, more courageous, more focused, more disciplined, more selfless, more loving and more giving person. It has improved me in every single way. It has had a profound effect on my life, and I still say it every day. And, you know, yesterday, when I first saw the news of what was happening in Afghanistan, my very first instinct was to get on my knees and say the Jesus prayer. And there's power in that. You say, well, how is there power in that, right? Well, there's power in that because it teaches you, it taught me, it taught me that the sins of the world are my fault in the sense that all of my decisions feed into the world around me and how I conduct myself feeds into the big catastrophes of the world. It's not an egotistical thing. It's not that I have delusions that I personally create reality and can start and stop the troubles of Afghanistan. No, but it is simply that it has taught me to always look at the splinter in my eye, not the log in others. Even when you're dealing with something as you know huge on the global scale as you know Afghanistan, the war in Afghanistan. Even with something that big. And that's empowering, man. That is empowering. But more than empowering, I think the entire world would be so much better off if everyone accepted that level of responsibility. I'm not saying to go through the Jesus prayer. And I'm actually, I'm kind of deviating here because I wanted to just talk about the Jesus prayer. So I, I'll leave it at that. Those are my experiences with the Jesus prayer. It has made me a better person in every single way. It has made me a more empowered person. It has made me a happier person. Happier in a deep and fulfilling way, not in a trite and shallow way. 
it's been profoundly effective for me and I just wanted to share that as I walked it's just the inspiration struck me to talk about it I don't usually like talking overtly about my spiritual or religious beliefs but spirits moving me to talk about it now so I'll talk about it now yeah and that's it if, I, if any of you are looking to try something that might have a positive influence on your internal world if you're dealing with guilt and shame just give it a shot man give it a shot however you want just set it as a goal every day i'm going to say this five times a day lord jesus christ son of god have mercy on me a sinner lord jesus christ son of god have mercy on me a sinner Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Give it a whirl, and I think you may find that it has surprisingly potent effects. All right, I hope you all have uh, great days out there.